Hello beloved technicals here. Today we're going to be taking a look again at the KSO Pro from Ice River. Now if you saw in the previous video I put together sort of a no talking no fuss guide on how to apply the heat sinks to it, improve the cooling so you can run the higher firmwares that are offered by T-Swift to achieve hash rates that are much greater than the 200 giga hash per second that this machine comes with. So today we're going to follow up in part two to see if we can get an even higher hash rate uh, by improving the cooling methods again mechanically. Now the little copper heat sinks that I put on the KSO Pro, they're kind of short. There's not a whole lot of surface area in there. So we may explore in the future adding some improved copper heat sinks there or just putting a whole shitload of heat sinks on the thing to see how cold we can get it. Before that, we want to see how much better we can get the temperature with fans because summer is coming. It's hot in here and it's hot on purpose. I'm trying to simulate summer conditions right now. So the office is creeping up. It's a little over 80 Fahrenheit right now here in the office. I'd like it to be a little warmer to be honest with you. We've got the fan on it. We're gonna take some baseline readings and then we're gonna swap out the fans and try a different fan. Now the shroud that I got on there is this one. I 3D printed this, link in the description below if you wanna print this thing. Uh, but I did download and print, it took a very long time. I bought a brand new printer just to do it because it's taking so long a double fan shroud. Now this, that's a huge bitch. Uh, I'm not sure about sort of the internal cavitation that's going on inside of this, if it's gonna improve airflow or, or if it's just gonna absolutely nuke it from orbit. I'm hoping it nukes it from orbit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try it with the base fan. We're gonna try it with the new 12 volt fan. We're gonna try it with this shroud to see how low we can get the temperatures. And then we're gonna put in the new firmware because we wanna to go to 360 and above. How high can we go? I'm the technicals, let's get into it. The technicals. All right, baseline test on the KSO Pro. We've got the AC Infinity 120 volt fan. It plugs in, it pulls about 20 watts. Overall, this thing pulling 200 watts even on the money. And that's about the max that I can pull uh, with this power supply. So that's not to say though, that if I put in another firmware, it's gonna pull the same amount because you saw in the previous testing, we were just a touch over. I'm okay being a touch over. Currently 80, uh, round 80 here in the office. I've got some wind going for my ceiling fan, uh, but we'll see if that improves. So right now, ADF, 320 giga hash firmware, the full power one uh, with the AC infinity fan. Let's see what our temperatures are on the Ice River monitor. We're on here on the Ice River monitor. Uh, everything looks great, temperature and voltage, all in the green, uh, but our temperature bored out 79 Celsius. That's high, um, that's on the higher end. Uh, but we're still getting around that 340 giga hash, so that's great. I wanted to run it for 15 minutes and we're right at that 15 minute mark. So what we're gonna do is let's swap out the fan. All right, so we are going to swap out this AC Infinity fan Great little fan. I'm not exactly sure of the CFM. Uh, there is a link in the description below if you'd like to buy this fan, this muffin fan. Do you know the muffin fan? Everybody, everybody sing along. Do you know the muffin fan? But it's a beefy little fan, metal housing. You know, it's thick. I really, I, I do like it. It's a quality fan. Uh, but we have this, this Walthi uh, uh, brushless DC fan. These are, uh, this is an ASIC fan, it's like an amp miner fan. 12 volt, and instead of trying to split off the 12 volt off the device itself, I got this, a fan controller that plugs in to 120. And I'm much more comfortable with this uh, than trying to plug it into here because, you know, I, I know that this is running 12 volt and it's probably okay, but I prefer having it separate. Plus it's gonna make it a lot easier when I have two fans because there's two little headers that come out of here. And this wasn't expensive. Link in the description below for both of these things. We're not trying to get a scholarship here, just enough to keep this thing from flying off. Also kind of like the fact that you can turn the fan on before the device to like start pre-cooling it before you turn the device on. I know that makes no difference whatsoever, but in my mind, it makes a difference. Well, obviously these types of fans are significantly louder. The camera's right here at it. And 90 to 100 decibels right up on it, so. You know, it's an amp minor fan. That's what they do. They're loud. Yeah, if you don't like that, you can turn it down 80, 85. So, you know, you can you can shave off quite a bit. It's, uh, you know, it's the, we're going for a function over form here, or function over quietness. It should be noted, too, that this 12-volt Walthi on the controller pulling about 27 watts on its own. So... 
about seven watts more than the AC Infinity fan. It's been about 15 minutes, still at 80 ambient, uh, just a touch over 200, so about uh, only about three watts more. So I guess the miner's using a little bit less power because of the increased cooling. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, temperatures have come down. Let's take a look. It's been about 15 minutes now. Well, why did it stop? And my biggest bugaboo about this is not the, the, the noise, the uh, volume of the fan, it's how hot the fan controller is getting. So I'll put this up on the, uh, on the actual screen, but I mean, you can kind of see the, how hot this shit is. Obviously the power supply, very warm. This thing, man, there is a hot spot from hell in there. Right there, huh? I'm taking a look at the device itself. You know, maybe we can get some ideas to where our hot spots are. I'll probably just overlay the audio to the uh, hot spot right there. Well, let's carry on. All right, so now it's time to get dangerous. We've got this monstrosity here. Like, I can't imagine uh, how long this would have taken to print on my Ender 3. I don't even think about it. I'm gonna need to drill a hole for the uh, power supply to go through. So uh, I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. And so one of these I borrowed off an L3 Plus. It wasn't using it really. So we do have a proper replacement coming because I have high hopes for this double fan method. More fan equal more flow equal more cold. Um, now we know that's not always the case because the airflow may interfere with the flow of the other fan and the air may get all choppy and cavitated. And I know cavitation is not the correct term. Cavitation refers to a uh, water, but it seems like the right word to use. Seems like going vertical is gonna be the best way to go uh, until I can print a bottom stand for this because um, laying it flat, this thing doesn't hug the KSO Pro as tightly. So I'm just going to do it vertical for now. And if we feel like there's going to be some potential the other way, we can do it the other way. Yeah, so when you turn up the fan controller all the way with two of these fans, it's got a, the controller is, yeah, it's pumping it. It's just too much for it to pull. So at least it's got some kind of protection in there. So what I might do is we're gonna run this test as is with the one fan controller. And then I'm gonna look around to see if I have uh, something else where I can power one of these four pin fans. Or we might just put the AC Infinity back, but I'd rather run it with these two ASIC fans. But right now it's running at two and a half amps. This thing says it's rated for two amps. So it is well above uh, what it's recommended to be. So this test might be kind of short. So two of these 12 volt fans is just not gonna work on this controller. It kept cycling down. I thought I could like run it long enough to get the, the test done, uh, but that's just not the case. For the sake of the test, I'm gonna run one fan and then I'm also gonna run this muffin fan. Do you know the muffin fan? <laughs> AC Infinity fan. That combined will uh, be about, I don't know, about 50 watts. All right, so double shroud. AC Infinity fan, which is only 50 CFM, and this 12 volt wall thigh is 230 CFM. Uh, so obviously the two wall thighs would be better, but I'm gonna have to figure out like an adapter situation because I don't wanna run it off a hub and then have to get a power supply that uses a six pin power to power these two 12. I'd honestly just rather buy two 120 volt, 150 CFM fan. It doesn't seem like they make ones that are 230 that are ac powered i'll keep looking around because i'm not trying to spend a whole bunch on the fans because you know two fans for 40 bucks i mean that's significant so anyway before i turned it off we're at about 15 minutes the 112 volt the one ac infinity our input and output temperatures uh about the same so the output temperature is a little better inputs are the same and that makes sense because it's pulling the same ambient air as far as i understand and the hash rate and power usage about the same. So uh, I'm getting about the same result from one big boy fan as I am these 
two fans, even though it's only an extra 50 CFM. Um, the shroud's not all the way on either because I did not want to impede the input on the fans that are on the case itself. And even though this thing is certainly long enough to accommodate it and the added flow moving through the fins would be enough air, I don't really want to do that. It's really all about getting that air through the center to move it away because these fans don't actually don't contact the sink directly they just uh they're just blowing down onto the board so you know really at this point i, I think these fans kind of become unnecessary it, you know just whatever their flow rate is um so i mean there's could be something to be said about running these fans off this board but i'm not sure if this is rated to you know deliver that kind of amperage to these ant miner fans so I'm not, I'm not gonna touch that. I'm not gonna monkey with that. You know, if you know about the internals of this, maybe T-Swift knows. Um, maybe that is something to be done, but otherwise, I think this thing is kind of, uh, kind of useless. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to the original shroud, one 230 CFM fan, and we're gonna mount it. Uh, we had it horizontal out in the building. I'm gonna keep it horizontal uh, and then because it runs stable here in my office the ambient temperature is uh, about 80 fahrenheit in the summer i expect the building temperatures to go up to probably 100 uh you know comfortably but we're not there yet so you know can we crank this bitch up to the 360 right now while temperatures are lower and kind of change the firmware over back you know when it starts to get too hot when we start having problems not sure why i didn't think of this sooner but uh as i was reassembling i thought well let's put that back on but then also the side fan i keep forgetting about that because i just think oh well you know i got all this airflow i don't really need the side fan anymore so threw the muffin fan on there 50 do you know the muffin fan got 50 cfm going there that's adding uh adding something to the equation so we're gonna let it go and run that as a test all right 15 minute mark 34 57 330 at 200 watts no issues not the same uh result as just a single uh 12 volt with i so the side fan doesn't appear to be doing really anything at all so we're gonna go ahead and pop it off but you know we we tried all right so here's how i have it structured in the building i've got the intake over here and I'm gonna place the power supply as I had it before and this fan controller towards the exhaust just because to capture that residual airflow and not waste it just to keep these as cool as I can. I know it's not really all that active of cooling, but it's gonna take the temperature down oh, quite a lot. Um, and then this is just kind of on its own rolling rack right here since I'm gonna be doing more testing with it. Uh, so let's hook it up give it 15 minutes to see where it's at and then we're going to try the 360 giga hash so after going all morning i tried the 360 the 340l the low power the 340 the 320l and now i'm on the 320 standard that's where i was mining since my last video um and so i'm back to 343 giga hash 175 watts, so a little bit lower, not sure why. Temperatures are great, um, but I was getting a pretty high uh, output on the 280. And so what I'm gonna do is, instead of just stopping here, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna keep going down, maybe two more iterations, just to see if my machine likes that firmware for some reason. Uh, this has been going for about, it says 19 minutes, but it's really about uh, about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna give this another like 10 minutes just to see what my average hash, hash rate uh, comes out to so I can say for sure that the 320 is gonna give me like, you know, around plus or minus 343 giga hash um, with these figures. And then I'm gonna go down a little bit to see if there's potential there. As you can see here, I was trying to keep track of it. The 360, uh, just n absolutely nothing. No no action whatsoever, didn't show a hash rate. It just kind of sat looking at me. Um, 340, was pulling 192 watts, but I didn't even write down the hash rate because I think it was like 150 giga hash or something. Um, 186 on the regular 340, 287 giga hash. So jumped up, but that's you know well below where we want to be. 
uh, the 320L. I guess the low power uh, firmwares are just, they just, uh, they're just not for my machine, I guess. And I'm assuming that's what the L means because as Matt Electron mentioned the low power version. And I couldn't find in the notes anything that mentioned what the L is for, but T-Swift sequence says to do the L's first and then the regular one. So that's what I've been doing. So anyway, now I'm on the 320, 175 watts, great temps, 10 minutes, 343. I'm gonna go for uh, 20 minutes or maybe 30 and see if that is truly the average. What I'd like to tell you is that uh, I've got a surefire way for you to like configure yours if you're going through this process, but it, I guess it's based on silicon and I guess it really com comes down to those MOSFETs and the heat sinks that I use. So I'm back to the 320. That was the overall winner. I tried going down some more. The 300 was not great. The 280L, not great. The 280 regular, not fantastic. So um, lower power on the 300, but the 320 is really where I'm shining. So in order for me to get up here, I've got to go back. I've got to revisit the MOSFETs. I've ordered some of the heat sinks that are kind of better. Uh, I'm a little apprehensive about popping off the old heat sinks. I don't want to damage the MOSFETs, but if I want to get up here, it's what I'm going to have to do. All right, so obviously not ideal, not an ideal outcome. Really was hoping that we could uh, just nuke it from orbit with a fan and uh, get to where we wanted to be, but it's going to come down to me redoing the heat sinks on those MOSFETs. So, Stay tuned for a future video because, hey, I got nothing else to do. That's what the channel's for, right? I'm gonna go ahead and pop those off and put on some new heat sinks once I get them. Uh, but exhaustive testing, I feel, uh, on my end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the 320 giga hashing variant, stay happily hashing it around 340 um, at, at just under 200 watts, safe range. Uh, it's out in the building, so ambient temperatures outside right now. It gets down to still in the 30s, low 40s at night, so that's fine. Um, but again, stay tuned. Let me know if you like this video, if you like going through the process of the testing step by step, you know, if you're, if you're cool with the longer form stuff. Uh, let me know if you've had success with your KSO Pro and what firmware you used and what heat sinks that you used and what other cooling methods you did uh, because I'd greatly like to know so I can maybe attempt to recreate it. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to leave this video a like. Helps with engagement. Leave a comment below. Do all the things that help me grow. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.